Um, another question, because we have time for a couple questions. Why don't we go with Annette up here in the front? I'm sorry, you, had, you were able to ask a question last night. So, and Annette actually didn't, so she. I, thank you. Um, this is interesting, being a friend and having this formal thing as well. You don't talk about this stuff on, at the <laughs> fence? No, we, the we, we talk <laughs> with microphones all the time. Exactly. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> this is so odd. And you're about three feet apart, yeah, but whatever. Exactly. Okay. Also strange. Anyway, uh, one of the things that I was thinking about last night after listening to the revolving door um, was, uh, yes, um, was um, the uh, Charles Ives, you know, when he talks about his uh, 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 initial uh, foray into the abstraction that his, his <coughs> works, you know, the dissonance and how he heard the two bands uh, you know, walking from different locations and living in the place uh, where the two bands were crossing over. And I was thinking about that. And then I, uh, last night, a little more about um, you know, music, what music had to do with your work, and you know, whether those were ideas that you were thinking about. Uh, uh, always. I mean, John Cage has been an important uh, influence for me musically. I actually am much more critical of his, of his poetry, which I think has a tendency to, towards literary tourism. But um, with regards to his ability to get you to pay attention to all the sound, I mean, if we all were quiet right now, if I just shut up, you could all hear these old chairs made of relatively fragile wood, and they shift around and they make their own their own sort of percussion that's been going on throughout this entire morning uh, in a very interesting fashion. That certainly is a music. It's one of the reasons why I never have objections when people bring babies. There was a discussion at one point that a couple of people might show up at the uh, reading last night. They didn't. Uh, uh, who uh, would be bringing service dogs. And, um, you know, from my perspective, fabulous in those terms. If there is a firehouse across the street and the engine goes off and the trucks roar out, that's not separate from your experience of the reading. Uh, I once was at a talk at Bob Perlman's house where the house next door <laughs> Uh, this is back in San Francisco, caught on fire. <laughs> and uh, the reading, fi the talk finally came to an end with the fire department standing in Bob's living room between the speaker and the audience. <laughs> um, and, you know, that certain, you know, here it is 35 years later. I still remember that event. So, pretty cool. 